And now, live from New York, Harvey, the DuPont Show of the Month. From the sun, from the air, from the earth, from the water, from the elements of nature. And man, through the science of chemistry, uses these elements to create for himself a better way of life. From DuPont come better things for better living through chemistry. Now, the DuPont Show of the Month. international competition since 1851. Right now, England's challenger, Scepter, and the American champion, Columbia, are competing for the Cup at Newport, Rhode Island, in one of the most significant and exciting sports events of the year. The results of this competition will be known in a few days. A competition that began with the design and building of the boats, with the selection of the materials and equipment. Months of preparation followed. Experienced craftsmen contributing special skills as the boats took final shape. At last, the boats were launched. Now came weeks of tough and rigorous training. This was the testing ground for the boats and their crews. Crews that were hand-picked for skill and experience, for the ability to work as a team. These men were chosen from among the finest sailors in the country just as the materials were chosen from the finest materials available. The running lines on this boat, for instance, are made of DuPont Dacron polyester fiber, as are the sails. Dacron was chosen because it is light and strong, dries quickly, and does not stretch. The spinnaker, which has to stretch and give, is made of nylon. Nylon has these qualities, plus great strength, light weight, and water resistance. Other DuPont products, such as plastics, synthetic rubber, and varnishes, were also chosen over competing materials. Day after day, week after week, the work went on. Then came the races among the four American contenders, a competition to determine which one would represent the United States. Columbia and her crew won out in a dramatic and exciting finish. In sports, as elsewhere, competition develops the finest skills. It calls for teamwork and hard work and the constant striving for perfection. Competition works much the same way in industry, too. Dacron, nylon, and other DuPont products used on these boats were chosen in competition with other materials because they do a better job. Just as you choose these same DuPont products for your everyday better living because they serve you better. All DuPont products face constant competition. And their success depends on DuPont's continuing ability to bring you better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Yes, 
Mr. Sillaby. Yes, this is the first party we've had in years. Mother! Yes, yes, there is a reason that I don't want it in the papers. <laughs> well, we all have our troubles, Miss Sillaby. <laughs> oh, uh, well, you might say I'm assisted entertaining by my daughter, Miss Myrtle May Simmons. Mother! <laughs> the society editor. Miss Tewksbury is finishing her song. Yes, she'll do an encore. She always does. <laughs> well, you might say that... Uh, Myrtle May Simmons looked charming in a ranch on rose tone crepe, picked up at the girdle with a touch of magenta on emerald. Oh, I wish you could see her, Miss Oliver. I really do. <laughs> Mother, how you... Mrs. Chauvinet just came in. Mrs. Chauvinet, uh, uh, I'll call you later, dear. Yes, Mrs. Chauvinet Sr. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, now you must be nice to Mrs. Chauvinet, dear. She has a grandson about your age. Oh, what difference will it make with Uncle Elwood? Now, I thought we agreed not to talk about that this afternoon. And now, the point of this whole party is to get you started dating. <laughs> you have so much to offer, dear. <laughs> well, now you've just got to meet someone. That's all there is to it. Well, if I do, they say, that's Myrtle Mae Simmons. Her uncle is Elwood P. Dowd, the biggest screwball in town. <laughs> Elwood P. Dowd and his pal, Harvey. Damn, Harvey. Oh, oh you said it. You promised me you wouldn't say that name. And now you've said it. I'm sorry, Mother. Well, at least you fixed it so Uncle Elwood won't be here this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Elwood. Why did Grandmother have to leave all her property to him? Well, I suppose because she died in his arms. People are very sentimental about things like that. Oh, you must remember that your Uncle Elwood is not living with us. We are living with him. <laughs> oh, there. Now, make up this perfectly charming, dear. <laughs> now, we'll work through the older women down to the younger group. I'll do my best. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely, Miss Newberry. Oh, perfectly lovely. I love you, dear. I That is a good story. And I must say, you tell it very well. We're just in time. Excuse me a moment, I have to answer the phone. After you. Make yourself comfortable, Harvey. Be with you in a minute. Hello. Oh, I believe you have the wrong number, but how are you anyway? Oh, this is Elwood P. Dowd speaking. What is your name, my dear? Miss Elsie Green? How are you today, Miss Green? Well, I hope I have the pleasure of meeting you soon, my dear. Bye-bye. Harvey? Don't you think we ought to have a short one before we join the ladies? So do I. Mother, mother, yes, Mr. Chauvinet. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Oh, Aunt oh dear. I thought you were dead. Oh no, no, I'm very much alive, thank you. <laughs> and this full-grown girl is your daughter. I've known you since you were a baby. What's your name, dear? Uh, this is Myrtle May, for the two sisters of her father. Oh well, of course he's dead. Now, perhaps that's what confused you. <laughs> Where's Elwood? Uh, well, uh, Elwood couldn't be here this afternoon. Elwood isn't here. Uh, no. Uh, now, do let me get you a cup of tea, dear. Shame on him. That's the main reason I came. I uh, want to see Elwood. Oh, yes, I know. Well, now, let's step into the library, and we won't be disturbed. <laughs> I was saying to Mr. Chauvenet only the other night, what on earth has happened to Elwood Dowd? He never comes to the club dances anymore. I haven't seen him at a horse show in years. Does Elwood see anybody these days? Oh, yes, Elwood sees uh, somebody. Oh, <laughs> yes. Your Uncle Elwood, child, is one of my favorite... Elwood! Uh, Ethel, what a pleasure to come home and find such a beautiful woman waiting for me. Elwood Dowd, bless your heart, you haven't changed. Oh, I'm forgetting my manners, really. Come, you must have some tea, dear. Punch if you don't like oh, tea. Oh, yes, stop pulling at me, you Elwood, two. Dear. Now, some mail came for you. I thought I'd take it up to your room. It looked very important. Did uh, you, Peter? That was yes. nice of you. And Ethel, I want you to meet 
Harvey. As you can see, he's a pooka. Harvey, you've heard me speak of Mrs. Chauvenet. We always called her Aunt Ethel. She's one of my oldest and dearest friends. Hmm? Yes, yes, that's right. This is the one. She's the one. Who's he talking to? I don't see anyone. <laughs> Harvey says he would have known you anywhere, Aunt Ethel. Vita, Myrtle, May, you both look lovely. Come along in, Harvey. We must say hello to all our friends. I beg your pardon, Anna. What? You're standing in his way. Oh. Oh. You go right in, Harvey. I'll join you in a minute. Anna, I can see you're disturbed about Harvey. Oh, please don't be. He stares like that at everybody. It's his way. But he liked you. Oh, I could tell he liked you very much. Now, some tea, perhaps. Oh, not right now. I think I'd better oh, be I'm running so along. Sorry, I'll be talking to right. you. Goodbye. Well, Goodbye. Oh, dear. Do you see what I mean? You see, Mother? You... Oh, no. What was happening? Harvey, I want you to meet three very lovely young ladies. He's introducing Harvey to everybody. Well, I can't face those people now. Oh, I wish I were dead. Oh, no, darling, no, 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 Lisa. Look here. Now, pretend I'm fixing your corsage. Oh, mother. We've got to. We've got to. Now, now, pretend we're having a gay little chat. Oh. Now, you keep watching. And if you catch his eye, let me know. He always comes when I call him. Now, you see, looking here? No, not yet. No, not... Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'm so sorry that you must go so soon. Oh, <laughs> Smile, can't you? Have you no pride? I'm smiling and he's my own brother. Mother, people get run over by trucks every day. Why can't something like that happen to Uncle Will? Oh, Myrtle May Simmons, I'm surprised at you. Oh, right? <laughs> Oh, 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 just a minute. Uh, well, I'm sorry, dear. I wish you could have stayed a little longer. Now we're talking to Mrs. Halsey. Is Harvey with him? How can I tell? How can anybody tell except Uncle Elwood? Elwood? Elwood, dear, would you come here a minute, please? Be right with you, Vita. Well, Harvey prefers his martinis without vermouth. It's a matter of taste. Oh, listen, dear. Now, I promise you, oh. this is the last time your Uncle Elwood will disgrace us in the <laughs> house. No, I'm going to ring up uh, Judge Gaffney. And I'm going to do something I've never done before. Now, you lift up your head and smile and go in there as though nothing had happened. <laughs> oh, Elwood. Elwood, will you step in the library and, and wait for me until the party's over? I want to talk to you now. It's very important. Certainly, sister. I happen to have a little free time right now, and you're welcome to all. Oh. <laughs> oh, you want Harvey to wait, too? Yes, I certainly do. Harvey? Sit down, Harvey. Make yourself comfortable. Edith says she wants to talk to us. Says it's important. Probably wants to congratulate us on the impression we made at her party. Temple Drive, is that right? Uh, yes. Yes, we were born and raised there. It's old, but we love it. It's our home. And you wish to enter your brother here at the sanitarium for treatment? Oh, oh yes, yes. Your brother's name, please? Uh, uh, Mrs. Simmons, what is your brother's name? Well, it's... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, but uh, life isn't easy for any of us these days. But I must go on lifting my head up just the same. Now, that's what I keep telling Myrtle May. And that's what Myrtle May keeps telling me. <laughs> oh, she's heartbroken about her Uncle Elwood. Oh, at the El Elwood P. Dow, that's... Uh, uh, his age, uh, please. Uh, um, uh, 44, the 27th of last April. He's Taurus. Taurus the bull. I'm Leo. Uh, Myrtle is on a cusp. You have him with you now? Uh, yes, yes, he's down in the taxi cab in the driveway. Is he married? 
Oh, no. No, El would never marry. He stayed home with Mother. He was always a great homeboy. He loved his home. Mr. Wilson, would you step down to a cab in the driveway and ask Mr. Dowd if he'd be good enough to step up to room 24 South Wing G? And this is his sister, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, how do? Oh, how do you do? Certainly, be glad to. Uh, now, about the rates here, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, well, that will all be taken care of by my mother's estate. Uh, uh, Judge Gaffney is our attorney. Oh, well, I'll see if Dr. Sanderson can see you now. Uh, Dr. Sanderson? Oh, no, no, dear. No, I want to speak to Dr. Chumley himself. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Simmons. Dr. Sanderson sees everyone. Dr. Chumley sees no one. He's a psychiatrist with an international reputation. Oh, oh well, then tell Dr. Sanderson I'm waiting. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful, Vita? <laughs> Mrs. Simmons? Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry I didn't hear you come in. You startled me. Oh, you're Dr. Sanderson? Yes, won't you step into my office, please? Oh, uh, thank you. I hope you don't think I jump like that all the time. Oh, of course not. Won't you be seated, please? Uh, yes, thank you. Now then, Miss Kelly tells me that you're concerned about your brother. Dowd, is it? Elwood P. Dowd? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, well, now, Doctor, this this isn't easy for me. Oh, naturally, these things are never easy for the families of the patients, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, Doctor, uh, everything I say to you is confidential, isn't it? I'm not a gossip, Mrs. Simmons. I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, yes, of course. Well, it's about Elwood. Hmm? Elwood drinks. I see. And he doesn't let a day go by without stepping into one of those cheap taverns, sitting around with a lot of riffraff and people you've never heard of, bringing them home to the house and playing cards with them, giving them food and money. I see. And that's why I want him committed here permanently, because I cannot stand another day of it. Why, Doctor, do you know that Myrtle May and I have to set a place at the table for Harvey? Mm -hmm. We have to move over on the sofa to make room for Harvey. And then this afternoon at the party, Mrs. Chauvin there. Oh, Doctor, don't you think it would have been just a little bit kinder of Mother if she had written me about him? Now, now be perfectly honest, I mean, don't, 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 don't you? I mean, well, I really couldn't say, Mrs. Simmons, because I haven't yes, enough well, information. Yes, well, I can. It I certainly would have. Uh, this person whom you call Harvey, who is he? He's a rabbit. Uh, perhaps, but just who is he? Some companion? Someone your brother has picked up in one of these bars, someone of whom you disapprove. But, uh, Doctor, I've been telling you, Harvey is a rabbit. A great big white rabbit, six feet high. Or is it six feet one and a half? <laughs> well, anyway, I ought to know. He's been around the house long enough. Uh, Mrs. Simmons, let me understand now, uh, this. Uh, Doctor, say... uh, must I keep repeating myself? <laughs> My brother insists that his closest friend is this big white rabbit. Now, this rabbit's name is Harvey. Harvey lives with us. He and Elwood go everywhere together. Elwood buys railroad tickets for him. Oh, dear. And as I said to Myrtle May, now, if your uncle was lonesome and wanted to bring something home, why couldn't he have brought home something uh, a human? Now, Doctor, I'm going to tell you something. I've never told anyone in this world before. But um, every once in a while, I see that great big white rabbit myself. Now, isn't that terrible? You know, I, I've never even told that to Myrtle May. And, 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 and what's more, he's every bit as big as Elwood says he is. Oh, don't tell that to me now, please, Doctor, please. I'm ashamed of it. Yes, well, now, Mrs. Simmons, I can see that you've been under a great nervous strain recently. Yes, yes, I have. Has the death of your mother depressed you considerably? Oh, oh you have no idea. Yes, you've how been uh, losing sleep. Sleep? Well, how could anyone sleep with all that going on? Uh, irritable over trifles? Yes, you try living with those two and see how your temper holds up. Yes, well, now, uh, you're, you're, you're tired now. Yes, I'm Mrs. tired. Mrs. Simmons, and, and, and I'm going to help you. Now, if you'll just, if you'll just stay here quietly for a moment, I'll, yes. I'll be right back. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I, 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 I think I'll just run down and get Elwood's things. Of course, I... I don't understand it. Why didn't someone answer the buzzer? Well, I didn't hear you, Doctor. Well, I rang and rang. Mrs. Simmons. Mrs. 
Sound the gong, Wilson. That poor woman must not be allowed to leave the ground. She may with the getaway, huh, Doc? The is serious, Wilson. Go after her. But I can't believe it. I had no idea it was the woman who needed treatment. She said it was for her brother. Well, she apparently knew the brother was going to commit her, so she came out here first to discredit him. Get me the brother on the phone, will you? His name is Dow. Elwood P. Dow. But, but doctor, I thought the woman was all right, so I had Wilson take the brother to number 24 South Wing G. He's there now. You had Wilson take the brother in? Well, Kelly, you're not serious. Ye yes, yes, I did, Doctor. I'm terribly sorry. You're sorry? I... Oh, no, I'll do it. Uh, hello, Miss Dunphy. Would you unlock the door to room number 24 and give Mr. Dowd his clothes? Listen, ask him to step down to the desk. And ask him to step down to the desk right away, please. You see, Dr. Sanderson would like to try and explain. Explain? Apologize. Where are you going? I've got to find Dr. Chumley. He'll want to know about this. But this man down. Uh, well, don't let him get away. I'll be right back. Look, I need a hand with that Simmons dame. Did you catch her? Oh, slick as a whistle. She's walking along the path humming a little tune. I jumped out at her from behind a tree. I, I said, sister, there's a man that wants to see you. You should have heard her yell. <laughs> she's wacky, all right. Yes, well, take her to 13 Upper West R. Well, she's there now. I brought her in through the diet kitchen. She's kicking and screaming like the devil. Look, look, I'll hold her if you'll come and undress her. No, I can't. Dr. Sanderson told me to wait here till her brother came down. We'll make it snappy, will you? Oh, Mr. Dowd? Elwood P. I'm Miss Kelly. How do you do, Miss Kelly? Uh, let me give you one of my cards. If you should want to call me, call me at this number, not that one. That's the old one. Well, well thank you. Perfectly all right. And if you lose it, don't worry, my dear. I have plenty more. Uh, won't you have a chair? Thank you. I'll have two. Dr. Sanderson is very anxious to talk to you. He should be down any minute. Please sit down. After you, Miss Kelly. Oh, no, no, I can't. I'm in and out all the time, but you mustn't mind me. Please be seated. After you. Um, could I get you a magazine to look at? Oh, I'd much rather look at you, Miss Kelly, if you don't mind. You really are very lovely. Oh, well, thank you. Now then, I'd like to have you meet uh, Mr. Dowd. Elwood T. Uh, let me give you one of my cards. Oh, I'm Dr. Lyman Sanderson. I'm Dr. Chumley's assistant out here. Well, good for you. I'm happy to know you. How are you, Doctor? Well, that's going to depend on you. Could we step into Dr. Chumley's office for a moment? Yes, yes. You've met Miss Kelly here. Oh, yes, yes. I've already had that pleasure. Now then, I would like to have you meet a very dear friend of mine. Well, later on, I'd be glad to. But first, won't you be seated, please? Because I would like to say... After Miss Kelly. Oh, sit down, Kelly. Oh, okay. Is that chair quite comfortable, Mr. Dow? Yes, yes. Would you care to try it? No, no, I... Would, would you like an ashtray? Could we get Mr. Dow an ashtray, please, Kelly? Sit down, Kelly. Now then, Mr. Dowd, <clears throat> I can see that you're not the type of man to, to be taken in by any high-flown phrases or beating about the bush. Is that so, Doctor? Yes, you, you have us at a disadvantage here. You know it, we know it, so let's lay our cards right out on the table. Well, that certainly appeals to me, Doctor. Well, it's the best way in the long run. People are people, no matter where you go. That is very often the case. And being human are liable to make mistakes. Now, Miss Kelly and I have made a mistake here this afternoon, and we'd like to explain it to you. Well, you see, Mr. Dowd, it really wasn't Dr. Sanderson's fault at all. It was mine. Well, a human failing, as I say. Well, I find it very interesting, nevertheless. You and Miss Kelly here? This afternoon, you say? Uh, we uh, do hope you'll understand. Oh, yes, yes. These things are often the basis of a long and warm friendship. And the responsibility, as I say, is not hers, but mine. Your attitude may be old-fashioned, Doctor, but I like it. Now, if I had seen your sister first, that would have been an entirely different matter. Now, there, you're surprised. I think the world and all of Vita, but I suppose she had seen her day. Well, you mustn't attach any blame to her. She's a very sick woman. 
She came out here insisting that you were in need of treatment. Well, of course, that's perfectly ridiculous. Vita shouldn't get upset about me. I get along fine. Uh, can I get you something, Mr. Don? What'd you have in mind? A light. Oh, here, let me, uh, let me give you a light. There we are. Your sister was quite upset and plunged right away into a heated tirade on your drinking. That was Vita. Well, I suppose you do take a drink now and then, the same as the rest of us. Yes, I do. Matter of fact, I'd like one right now. As a matter of fact, so would I. Mr. Dowd, does your sister drink? No, Doctor. I don't believe Vita has ever taken a drink. Well, I'm going to surprise you. I believe she has and does. Constantly. I am certainly surprised. It was when she began to speak so emotionally about this big white rabbit, Harvey. I believe she called him Harvey. Harvey's his name. She claims that you were persecuting her with this Harvey. Lita shouldn't feel that way. Now, Doctor, before we go any further, let me introduce oh, you. Oh, just let me make my point first, Mr. Dowd. Your sister's condition is serious, but I can help her. She will, however, have to remain here temporarily. Doctor, I've always wanted Vita to have everything she needs. Exactly. But I wouldn't want her to stay out here unless she liked it out here and wanted to stay. Well, I don't believe you realize the seriousness of the situation. It stands to reason that no one has ever seen a big white rabbit six feet high. Not very often, Doctor. I like you, Mr. Dowd. Well, thank you, Doctor. I like you, too. And Miss Kelly here, I like her, too. So, we're agreed that your sister is to be committed here temporarily. Now, just to make sure in your own mind that your sister is in good hands, perhaps you'd like to look around the place. Well, for Vita's sake, I believe I'd better do that, Doctor. It's okay. been a great pleasure having this little talk with you, Mr. Dowd. Thank you. I've enjoyed it, too, Doctor, meeting you and Miss Kelly here. Now, then, I would like to invite both of you to come with me now down to Charlie's place for a drink. When I enjoy people, I like to stay right with them. Oh, I'm sorry, but Miss Kelly and I are on duty right now. Uh, but if you'd give us a rain check some other time, we'd be glad to. When? Well, I can't say right now. Miss Kelly and I are on duty until 10 o'clock tonight. Well, let us go to Charlie's place at 10 o'clock tonight. Well, Miss Kelly, I... I can pick both of you up in a cab at 10 o'clock tonight, and the four of us will spend a very happy evening. I want you to become friends with a very dear friend of mine. Oh. Well, you said later on, so later on it'll be, Doctor. Mr. Dow. Boy, that was a close shave, all right. Although he seemed like a, a reasonable enough fellow. You know, that man is proud. What he has to be proud of, I don't know. But he's certainly... Dr. Sanderson, a... Miss Kelly. Oh, Dr. Chumley. Tell the gardener to prune more carefully around my prized dahlias along the fence by the main road. They'll be ready for cutting next week. Thank you. The difficulty of the woman who has the big white rabbit, has it been smoothed over? Uh, yes, Doctor. I just spoke to her brother, and he was quite reasonable. While I've had many patients out here who saw rabbits, I've never before had a patient with an animal at large. Uh, yes, Doctor. She called him Harvey. Harvey? Hmm. Unusual name for an animal of any kind. Harvey's a man's name. <laughs> I've known several men in my day named Harvey, but I've never heard of any type of animal whatsoever with that name. The case has an interesting phase, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. I think I'll run up and talk to this patient myself. What's this uh, hat and coat doing in my office? Whose is it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Miss Kelly, did Mr. Dowd have his hat and coat when he left? Oh, yes, Doctor. Maybe some kind of identification here. What's this? Two holes cut in the crown of his hat, see? Oh, well, that's strange. <laughs> Some new fad. We'll put them away, hang them up, get them out of here. <clears throat> Hello, Dr. Chumley. Oh, there you are. How is every little old thing? Fair, thank you, Wilson, fair. Look, I'm going to have to have a ham with that Simmons dame. She's terrible. Hey, you forgot me, didn't you? Well, I got her corset off all by myself. We're going upstairs to see this patient right now, Wilson. She's in the hydro tub, sir. I left the water running on her. Oh, Willie, remember your promise. Please, Hello, Dr. Kelly? Sanderson. You haven't forgotten Dr. McClure's cocktail party. No. We promised them faithfully. That's right. I have to run upstairs now and look in on a patient. I'll be down shortly. Give a little quick diagnosis, Willie. We don't want to be late to Wait the party. Wait I'm dying to see the inside of that house. Oh, good evening. Oh, good evening. I'm Mrs. Chumley, Dr. Chumley's wife. Oh, I'm happy to know that. Dowd is my name, Elwood P. Hey, let me give you one of my cards. If you should want to call me, call me at this one, not that one. That's the old one. Well, thank you. Is there something I can do for you? What'd you have in mind? Well, you seem to be looking for someone. Oh, yes, I am. I'm looking for Harvey. I went off without him. Is he a patient here? Oh, no, no. Nothing like that. Does he work here? 
No, he's what you might call my best friend. He's also a puka. He came out here with me and Vita this afternoon. <laughs> Where was he when you last saw him? Well, as a matter of fact, he was sitting right in that chair, and his hat and coat were here. Well, there doesn't seem to be any hat and coat here now. Perhaps he left. Hardly. I don't see him anywhere. What was that word you used? Puka? Yes, puka. That's it. Is that something new? Oh, no, no. It's, as I understand it, it's something very old. <laughs> I never happened to hear it before. No, I'm not too surprised at that. I hadn't myself until I'd met him. <laughs> I do hope he gets an opportunity to meet you, Mrs. Chumley. I'm sure he would be quite taken with you. Well, thank you very much. That's very nice of you to say so, I'm sure, but... Not at all. Would you care to come downtown with me now, my dear? I'd be glad to buy you a drink. Oh, well, thank you. But I am waiting for Dr. Chumley. And if he came down and found me gone, he'd be liable to raise... Well, he would be irritated. Well, we wouldn't want that, would we? No. Some other time, perhaps? Well, thank you. Excuse me. I'll tell you what I'll do, however. What will you do, however? I'm interested. If your friend comes while I'm here, I'll be glad to give him a message for you. Well, I'd certainly appreciate that. Ask him to meet me downtown if he has no other plan. <laughs> well, I'd better write that down. Ah, here we are. Meet Mr. Dowd downtown. Any particular place downtown? Oh, Harvey knows where. He knows this town like a book. <laughs> Harvey, you know where. Harvey what? Just Harvey. <laughs> I'll tell you what. What? Doctor and I are going right downtown to 12th and Montview. Dr. McClure is having a cocktail party. Cocktail party? 12th and Montview. We're driving there in a few minutes. We'd be glad to give your friend a lift into town. Well, I hate to impose on you, but I certainly would appreciate that. No, oh, that's no trouble at all. Dr. McClure is having this party for his sister from Wichita. I didn't know Dr. McClure had a sister from Wichita. Oh, you know Dr. McClure. No. Oh. Well, it's been awfully nice meeting you, Mrs. Chumley. I hope to see you soon again, my Yes, so do I. Good night, my dear. Good night. Oh, uh, you can't miss Harvey. He's very tall. Like that. <laughs> that Simmons woman is uncooperative, Doctor. She refused to admit to me that she has this big rabbit, insists it's her brother. See that she gets the medication at nine, again at ten, if she continues to be so restless. Another trip to the hydro room at 8 and 1 in the morning at 7. Then we'll see if we can cooperate tomorrow, won't we, Doctor? Yes, Doctor. You know where to call me if you need me. Yes, Doctor. Ready, Pat? Yes, Willie. Oh, Willie, there was a man here, a man... That... Oh, here's his card. Dowd, Elwood P. Dowd. Well, that's Mrs. Simmons' brother, Doctor. I told him he could look around the place. Well, he didn't ask to see her. He was looking for someone, some friend of his. Someone he came out here with this afternoon. Oh, was there anyone with Mr. Dowd when you saw him, Kelly? No, Doctor, not when I saw him. Well, he said there was. He said he not saw his friend sitting right here in Willie's chair with his hat and coat. He seemed quite disappointed. Dr. Sanderson. Oh, Willie, I told him if we located his friend, we'd be glad to give him a lift into town. That was all right, wasn't it? Of course, of course. Oh, here it is. I wrote it down on the back of this card. He said his friend's name was Harvey. Harvey? Well, he didn't tell me his last name. He said something else about him. Puka, but I couldn't quite get what that was. Harvey. He said his friend was very tall. Oh, Willie, why are you looking like that? This was a very nice, polite man. And he merely asked us to give his friend a lift into town. If we can't do a favor for someone, why are we living? M Miss, Mrs. Chumley, how long ago was he in here? When did he leave? Get me that hat, by George. I'll find out about, about this. Gaffney, Judge Gaffney, okay, here, right here. Stop the Did a man in a brown suit go through the main gate? A few minutes ago. He did? He's gone? Judge Gaffney? Judge, this is Dr. William Chumley, the psychiatrist. Judge, you telephoned out here this afternoon about having a client of yours committed. Is that name spelled with a W or a U? Oh, uh, Mr. Elwood P. Dowd. Well, thank you, Judge. Dr. Sanderson, I believe your name is Sanderson. Yes, yes, Doctor. You know that much, do you? Yes, sir. You went to medical school, you specialized in the study of psychiatry, you graduated, you went forth. Perhaps they neglected to tell you that a rabbit has large pointed ears, that a hat for a rabbit would have to be perforated to make room for those ears. Well, doctor, Mr. Dowd seemed perfectly reasonable to say... Doctor, the function of a psychiatrist is to tell the difference between those who are reasonable and those who merely talk and act 
Reasonably. Wait, but, uh, Dr. Chumley, I, I, I... Wilson, I want you. I will now have to do something I haven't done in 15 years. I will have to go out after this patient, Elwood P. Dowd, and I will have to bring him back. And when I do bring him back, your connection with this institution is ended as of that moment. Wilson, get the car. Yes, sir. Call the McClaws and say we can't make it. Miss Kelly, come upstairs with me and we'll get this woman out of the tub. Hello? Hello. Hello. Wilson, what is a pooka? A what? A pooka. You can search me, Mrs. Chumley. Hello. Send Dr. Chumley's car right over. It's an emergency. Right. I wonder if it'd be here in this encyclopedia. They have everything. I wonder if it's a lodge or what it is. Carl, be right over, Mrs. Chumley. Oh, dear. I'll have to tell Cook we'll be home for dinner. She'll be furious. She'll raise... Oh, dear. P-O-O-K-A, Puka. A fairy spirit in animal form, always very large. The Puka appears here and there, now and then to this one and that one, at his own caprice. A wise but mischievous creature, very fond of rum pots, Crack pots, and how are you, Mr. Wilson? You, Mr. Wilson? sun visor and crash pad cushioned the blow. Both are made by companies who use basic materials developed by DuPont. DuPont not only supplies the materials, but shares its broad experience, its technical skills, and its research facilities with these companies. This is teamwork. And much of this teamwork takes place in these DuPont sales service laboratories near Wilmington, Delaware. Here, technical help is given to DuPont customers in many fields, such as clothing. DuPont helps manufacturers use DuPont fibers to make your clothing more attractive, easier to care for. In this building, DuPont helps to solve the technical problems of its customers in the textile industry. Here are machines for making almost every kind of fabric. The same kind of machines DuPont customers use. From these machines, come thousands of yards of new fabrics, but DuPont doesn't sell them. They're used for experimental purposes only, to test new fibers and new ways of producing better, more useful fabrics. This is teamwork. Those plastic containers that are so handy for food storage, they too are products of teamwork. By duplicating the production methods of the manufacturer, DuPont technicians help him solve many of his problems help him improve his product. Hundreds of plastic products are made here for test purposes only. In these laboratories, DuPont technicians work with auto and truck manufacturers to develop better antifreezes. In this building, about 200 nylon cord tires are made each month for testing purposes. DuPont does this research to help tire manufacturers develop better tires for you. This too is teamwork. In another DuPont laboratory, there's a complete dry cleaning plant where new techniques and materials are tested. This helps every dry cleaning shop in the country. All these laboratories and facilities are important in the teamwork between DuPont and its customers. But more important are the hundreds of highly skilled DuPont technicians who are experts at knowing and solving other manufacturers' problems. In sales service laboratories and in customers' plants, it is teamwork between DuPont and other companies, large and small, that helps to bring you all of DuPont's 
better things for better living through chemistry. After station identification, we will return to Harvey, the DuPont Show of the Month. This is the CBS Television Network. Oh, uh, due to technical difficulties beyond our control, we won't be able to show you a glass of our delicious cool brewed peels tonight. Don't protect me, Harry. Viewers, I, Bert Peel, drop the whole case. But since we can't show you one, why not pour your own at home? You're a good man, Harry Peel. Of the top-rated filters, only recessed Parliament gives no filter feedback. High filtration Parliament. James Mason stars tonight on The Late Show, Channel 2. <laughs> Well, where is she? Where's who? Whom do you mean? Come on in and sit down. I mean your mother. Where's Vita Louise? Why, Judge Gaffney, you know where she is. Uh -huh. She took Uncle Elwood out to the sanitarium. Oh, that. But what was I called at the club with a lot of hysteria? I couldn't even get what she was talking about. Well, she took Uncle Elwood out to the sanitarium. All she had to do was put him in. Myrtle, I feel pretty bad about this thing of locking Elwood up. That boy had everything. Brains, personality, friends. Men liked him. Women liked him. He could have done anything, been anything, made a place for himself in this community. Well, all he did was get himself a big rabbit. Yes, I know. He's had that rabbit in my office many a time. I'm old, but I don't miss much. Oh, 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 oh. Mother! Oh, what's wrong? Oh, I never expected to see either of you again. Take hold of her, Judge. She looks like she's trying to paint. Steady, steady, girl. Steady. You're all right. You're going to be perfectly all right. Don't rush her, buddy. Ease her in. Oh, dear. Let me sit down. Let me find some place to sit down. Here you are, girl. Oh, dear. Easy, Myrtle. Easy. Oh, dear. Get her some tea, Myrtle. Do you want some tea? I'll get you some tea, Mother. Get her coat off, Judge. Myrtle, get your coat off, Vita. Get her coat off, Myrtle. No, now leave me alone. Just let me get my breath. Let her get her breath, Judge. Let me sit here a few minutes and let me go up to my own bed where I can let go. Oh, oh, what happened to you, Mother? Uh, judge. Judge, you've got to sue them. They put me in and let Elwood out. Oh, what's Mother. this? Oh. But why? Why? What did you say? What did you... you must have done something. I didn't do one thing. I just told them about Elwood and Harvey. Well, then why did they keep you? I don't understand it. Well, I told them about Elwood and Harvey, and then I went down to get his things. And as I was walking along the path, that awful man stepped out. He was a white slaver. Why? Oh, 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 I know he had on a white suit. That's how they advertise. A man? Well, what did he do? What did he do? Well, he took hold of me. And, and, uh, 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 oh, oh, I said, I didn't really Go on, Vita Louise. Go mm. on, girl. Poor mother. Was he a young man? Oh, well, mate, no. perhaps you'd better leave the room. Now I should say not. Go on, mother. Well, what did he do, Vita? Uh, well, well, he took me upstairs and tore my clothes off. Oh! Hear that, Judge? Go on, Mother. I'll sue them for this. Well, and then he dumped me down in a tub of water. Oh, for heaven's sake! Oh, Judge, you know, I always thought that what you were showed in your face. Don't you believe it? Don't you believe it, Myrtle? Why, that man took hold of me like I was a woman of the streets. <laughs> oh, but I fought. Oh, I always said if a man jumped at me, I'll fight. Now, haven't I always said that? Mother's always said that, Judge. That's one thing Mother's always told me to do. Yes, yes. Well, he took hold of me, and they began to treat me like a... Like, 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 like a what? Uh, oh, Judge, you better clean that place up. You better get the authorities to clean it up. Now, d don't you ever dare go out there, Myrtle. Now, you hear me? This I, stinks I, I, to high heaven, Vita. Uh, I'll run somebody out of the street. Uh, Judge, is that all those doctors do at places like that? think about sex. Well, I, uh, I don't know. Uh... Well, if it is, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. It's all in their heads, anyway. Why don't they go for nice long walks in the fresh air? Mm. Why, Judge Gaffney walked everywhere for years. Now, didn't you, Judge? <clears throat> now, uh, let me take some notes on this. Uh, uh, Dr. Chumley, and who else was involved? Dr. Sanderson. But don't pay any attention to anything he tells you. He's a liar. Close set eyes, you know, he's always liars. Besides, he t I told him something in the strictest confidence, and he blabbed it. What did you tell him, Mother? 
Oh, well, I, I forget now. I, I don't want to talk about it. I, but I mean, you can't trust anybody. Uh, anything you've told us, Dr. Sanderson, you can tell us, Vita Louise. Mm -hmm. This is your daughter, and I'm your lawyer. Oh, I know which is which. Oh, no, no. I want to forget all about it. I want them sued, and I want them upstairs in my own bed. Mother, was... where's Uncle Elwood? Well, how should I know? They let him go. Oh, they're not interested in men at places like that. <laughs> uh, don't be so naive, Myrtle May. Yeah. But, Mother, no matter who, who jumped at you, we still got a lock up Uncle Elwood. Yes, well, I don't know where he is. Now, next time you take him, Judge. <gasps> Wait until Elwood hears what they did to me. Well, he won't stand for it, you know. <laughs> oh, well, you've just got to sue them, Judge. And Myrtle May, I hope that never, never in your whole life a man tears the clothes off you and dumps you down in a tub of water. Uh, oh, okay, is he here? Oh, 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 that's the man, that's the white slaver. Upstairs, dear, upstairs, quickly. Well, that one. Quickly. No, the other crackpot, the one with the rabbit, is he here? No, and may I ask who not you are? doctor. Good evening, Judge. Let's not waste time. Has he been here? No, but she here. Are doctor? you sure he ain't been here? Of course. Now, he's wise to us, Doc. He's in hiding. It's going to be an awful job to smoke him out. It will be more difficult, but I'll do it. They're sly, they're cunning. But I get them. I always get them. We've been to 17 bars already. Dr. Dr. Charlie. Place, Charlie's place. Chris's I have to farm. inform you that Mrs. Simmons has retained me to file suit against you for what happened to her at the sanitarium this afternoon. Water under the dam. The important thing now is to get this man, take him out to the sanitarium where he belongs. That's right, Judge. That's just what I think. I want to introduce Miss Myrtle May Simmons, Mr. Dowd's niece, uh, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, daughter. how do you do, Dr. Charlie? How do you do, Miss Simmons? Hello, Myrtle. Now then, let me talk to Mrs. Simmons. Uh, 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 Mother won't come down, Doctor. Oh, why don't you take the doctor upstairs, Judge, and get Mother to talk to him? No, but Myrtle, under the circumstances... All right, I Wilson, think... I have a situation here. Wait for me. Okay, Doctor. <laughs> so your name's Myrtle May, huh? What? Oh, yes. Say, if we put the grabs on your uncle, you're liable to be coming out to the sanitarium on visiting days. <laughs> well, I really don't know. <laughs> well, if you do, I'll be there. You will? <laughs> sure. And if you don't see me right away, well, don't give up. Stick around. I'll show up. You will? Oh. Well, you heard Dr. Chumley tell me to wait. Yeah. Tell you what. While I'm waiting... I sure could use a sandwich and a cup of coffee. No, oh, certainly. If you'll excuse me, I'll just precede you into the kitchen. Yes, sir. You're all right, Myrtle May. What? Well, Dr. Chumley noticed it right away, and he don't miss a trick. Tell you something else, Myrtle. What? You not only got a nice build, but... Kid, you got something else, too. What? You got the screwiest uncle that ever stuck his puss inside Chumley's rest. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh. Harvey? Dr. Chumley, please. Oh, is this Mrs. Chumley? This is Elwood P. Dowd speaking. How are you tonight, my dear? Uh, tell me, Mrs. Chumley, were you able to locate Harvey? Oh, don't worry. No, never mind. I'll find him. I'm sorry I missed you at the McClure cocktail party. I waited until you phoned and said you couldn't come because a patient had escaped. Where am I? Oh, I'm here. But I must leave right away. 
Yes, I've got to find Harvey. I have something I want to show him. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Chumley. My regards to you and anybody else you might run into. Bye-bye. <laughs> You keep now, 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 Judge. Judge, you go right to your office and begin. Mrs. Simmons, I... I'm suing you for $50,000, and that's final. Mrs. Simmons, uh, this picture for? over your mantle. Oh, that portrait happens to be the pride of this house. Uh, make it $100,000. Who painted it? Oh, I don't know. Some man. I forget his name. He was here for the sittings. Then we paid him, and then he went away. Uh, do get started here. Do get started. Uh, I suppose you can persuade some people to do anything. Well, Dr. Chumley, you know, last winter I took a call. I, 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 oh, now, steady, now, I, steady, Mrs. Simmons. Come right oh, over here and sit down. Everything will oh, be all no. right. Now, tell me what, what oh, is the matter. Oh, 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 that is not my mother. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, Elwood's been here. Now, he's been here. You better be quiet. I'll take it. Oh, oh. Hello? Yes, yes. Well, who's calling? Here he is, Mrs. Simmons. It's your brother. Oh, I'll talk to you. I'll yes. talk to you. Don't tell him I'm here. Be casual. Yes, I'm casual. Yes. Oh, uh, Elwood, dear? Oh, Elwood. Where are you? Hmm? Oh, well, just, just a minute. He won't tell me where he is. He wants to know if Harvey is here. Tell him Harvey is here. Yes, but he isn't. Tell him he's here, and perhaps that'll bring him back. Oh. Uh, well, Elwood, yes, yes, Harvey's here. Now, why don't you come home? Hmm? Well, I... It won't work. Hmm? He wants me to ask Harvey to come to the telephone. Well, say that Harvey's here and can't come to the telephone. Say that he's in the, uh, in the bathtub. The bathtub? Say he's in the bathtub and that you'll send him over there. That way we can find out where he is. Oh, well, I... Now, you've got to do this, Miss Sims. You've got to do it. Um, Elwood? Uh, yes, Elwood, yes, and um, Harvey's here, but he can't come to the telephone. No, no, he's, he's in the bathtub. Yes, yes, I'll send him over as soon as he's dry. Uh-huh. Uh, where are you? Uh, well, uh, but, but Elwood, uh, 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 Did he hang up? He said Harvey just walked in the door. And to look in the bathtub, it must be a stranger. <gasps> But I found out where he is. Where? He's at Charlie's place. Now, that's a bar over at 12th and Main. 12th well, and Main, yes. yes. Uh, well, where are you going, Doctor? I'm going over there to get your brother and take him out to the sanitarium where he belongs. I must observe this man. I must watch the expression on his face as he talks to this rabbit. He does talk to the rabbit, you say? Oh, they tell each other everything. What's that? Well, well, I mean, of course. He you, uh, perhaps you better not go. Oh, don't worry now. I can handle it. <laughs> That's what you think. Uh, Myrtle May? Uh, Myrtle May? See who's in the bathtub. <laughs> Tough you're getting bounced. I had you pegged for the one guy who'd make the grade. Oh, those are the brakes. How soon are you taking off? Well, as soon as Dr. Chumley gets back. Yeah, it's beginning to smell awful funny to me. Four hours he's been gone and then a word out of him. He should know better than to go after a psycho without me. Kelly, maybe you'd better call the police station and see what's happened to Dr. Chumley. I... Mr. Dowd! Where's right Dr. There? Chumley? These are for you. For me? Why, thank you. They're quite fresh, too. I just picked them outside. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope Dr. Chumley didn't see you there. His prize, Dad. Uh, where's Dr. Chumley? Did he go upstairs? Not knowing, I cannot stay. Those colors are lovely against your hair. Well, I've never worn burnt orange before. It's such a trying color. You would improve any color, my dear. Thanks. Did Dr. Chumley go to his house? I don't know. I have a cab outside, if it's possible for you is to get away now. Where is Dr. Chumley? Oh, is he coming with us? That's nice. Oh, I must apologize for being a few seconds late. But I thought Miss Kelly should have some flowers. After what happened out here this afternoon, Doctor, the flowers really should be from you. Uh, shall we go now? Uh, maybe Wilson has a vase for those flowers, Miss Kelly. What 
Please sit down, Mr. Dow. Oh. The, uh, the situation has changed since this afternoon, Mr. Dow, but, but if you'll begin by taking a cooperative attitude, now that's half the battle. We all have to face reality sooner or later, Mr. Dowd. Doctor, I wrestled with reality for 40 years, and I'm happy to state that I finally won out over it. I do hope Miss Kelly won't be late. Here you are. Upstairs, buddy, we're going upstairs. Is the doctor okay? There must be some mistake. Uh, Miss Kelly, Dr. Sanderson, and I are going down town for a drink. Would you care to join us, Mr. Wilson? Wilson? They have a wonderful floor show. Yeah. Wait till you see the floor show we've got. Upstairs, uh, buddy. Just, just a minute, Wilson. Uh, sit down, Mr. Dowd. Now then, Mr. Dowd, where... Oh, sit down, Kelly. Now then, Mr. Dowd, where did you say Dr. Chumley went? As I said, he did not confide his plans in me. Mr. Dowd, Dr. Chumley went into town to pick you up. That was four hours ago. Where has the evening gone to? Smart, huh? Just a minute, Wilson. Did you see Dr. Chumley tonight? Yes, I did. He came into Charlie's place around dinner time. It is a cozy spot. Let us all go down there now and talk it over with the talk. We're going no place. Let me handle this. Well, handle it then, but find out where the doctor is. Now then, Dr. Chumley did come into Charlie's place, you say? Yes, he did. And I was very glad to see him. Go on. He had asked for me, and naturally the proprietor brought him over and left him. We exchanged the conventional greetings. I said, how do you do, Dr. Chumley? He said, how do you do, Mr. Dowd? I believe we said that at least three times. Come on, come on! Mr. Wilson, I'm just trying to be factual. I then introduced him to Harvey. To who? The white rabbit, six feet tall. Six feet? Uh, six feet, one and a half. Oh, yes, excuse me. Okay, okay, fool around with him. Meanwhile, the doctor's probably bleeding to death in some ditch. If those were his plans for the evening, he did not tell me. Go on, Mr. Dowd. Well, Dr. Chumley sat down in the booth with us. I was sitting on the outside like this, Harvey on the inside near the wall, and Dr. Chumley was seated directly across from Harvey where he could look at him. Harvey then suggested that I buy him a drink. Knowing that he does not like to drink alone, I suggested to Dr. Chumley that we join him. So? We joined him. Well, go on, go on. We joined him again. Then what? We kept right on joining. Oh, skip all the joining, will you? Mr. Wilson, you're asking me to skip a large portion of the evening. Come on, tell us what happened, please. Well, Dr. Chumley and Harvey got into a conversation. Rather quietly at first. Later on, it became rather heated. Dr. Chumley raised his voice. Yeah? Why? Well, it seems there was a beautiful blonde woman, a Mrs. Smithhills and her escort, seated in the booth directly across from us. Dr. Chumley got up to go over to sit next to her explaining to her that they had once met in Chicago. Her escort escorted Dr. Chumley back to me and Harvey and tried to point out that it would be better for Harvey to, or rather Dr. Chumley, to mind his own affairs. Does he have any? Does he have any what? Does he have any affairs? Well, how should I know? Look, you're lying and we know it. Mr. Wilson, I never lie. You've done something with Dr. Chumley, and I'm going to find out what it Wilson, is. Don't touch him. Maybe he isn't lying, Wilson. Oh, look, you two don't believe that story he's telling about Dr. Chumley talking to a big white rabbit, do you? Wilson, please. Hey, stimulating as all this is, I really must be getting Now, off. wait a minute. No, Mr. Wilson, I have things to do. Mr. Dowd? Yes, my dear? Tell me, what is it you do? Well, Harvey and I sit in the bar, have a drink or two, Play the jukebox. Soon the faces of the other people turn toward mine. They smile. They're saying, we don't know your name, mister. But you're a lovely fellow. Harvey and I warm ourselves in all these golden moments. We have entered as strangers. Soon we have friends. They come over. They sit with us. They drink with us. They talk to us. They tell about the big, terrible things they have done, the big, wonderful things they will do, their hopes, their regrets, their love, their hates, all very large, because nobody ever brings anything small into a bar. And then I introduce them to Harvey. And he is bigger and grander than anything they offer me. When they leave, they leave impressed. The 
same, people seldom come back. But that's envy, my dear. There's a little bit of envy in the best of us. It's too bad, isn't it? How did you happen to call him Harvey? Harvey's his name. How do you know that? Well, that's a rather interesting coincidence, Doctor. One night, several years ago, I was walking early in the evening along Fairfax Street between 18th and 19th. Do you know that block? Yes, yes. I had just finished helping Ed Hickey into a taxi cab. Ed had been mixing his rye with his gin, and I felt that he needed conveying. Anyway, I started to walk along, and I heard a voice say, Good evening, Mr. Dowd. I turned, and there was this great white rabbit leaning against a lamppost. Well, I thought nothing of that, because when you've lived in a town as long as I've lived in this one, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. So, naturally, I went over to chat with him. He said to me, Ed Hickey is a little spiffed this evening. Or oh, could I be mistaken? Well, of course, he was not mistaken. I think the world and all of Ed, but he was spiffed. Anyway, we stood there and talked. Finally, I said, you have the advantage of me. You know my name, but I don't know yours. Right back at me, he said, what name do you like? Well, I didn't have to think for a minute. Harvey has always been my favorite name. So I said, Harvey. And this is the interesting part of the whole thing, Doctor. He said, what a coincidence. My name happens to be Harvey. What was your father's name? John, John Frederick. When you were a child, you had uh, a playmate, a companion, someone of whom you were very fond, someone with whom you spent many happy, carefree hours? Oh, yes, yes, Doctor, didn't you? What was his name? Vern. Vern McElhenney. Vern, Vern. Did you know the McElhenney's, Doctor? Uh, no, no. Too bad. There were a lot of them, and they circulated. Wonderful people. Now, think carefully, Mr. Dowd. Wasn't there someone, somewhere, sometime, whom you knew by the name of Harvey? Never anyone by that name? No. No one, Doctor. Maybe that's why I had such hopes for it. Well, come on, Miss Kelly. We'll take Mr. Dowd upstairs now. Come on, Dowd. Come on, Elwood. Very well, Lyman. I won't be able to stay very long because I promised I'd take Harvey to see the floor show. You tell Dr. Chumley that I've put Elwood in South 24B. I'm being followed. Lock that door. Well, who's following you? None of your business. Often the story of how products are improved through competition. Here, the sailor sweater in soft, luxurious orlon, equally trim with skirts, slacks, or shorts. 
The cardigan with the fringe on the side, double buttoned. Orlon lets it lead the carefree life. Here's the newest sweatered look in Orlon, the chemise in a bulky popcorn knit. Orlon makes it light to wear, keeps the chemise shape in shape always. Here in the showroom of a sweater manufacturer are the new fashions in sweaters. They're being judged by sweater buyers for stores throughout the country. Buyers like this young lady. She's one of thousands who visited the showrooms of many manufacturers last spring to inspect and to choose from many textures and styles to select the sweaters you will buy this fall. She's taking part in the tradition that sparks American business, competition. But this is only part of the story of competition. There is competition among the materials from which sweaters can be made. Wool, cashmere, blends of wool and fur. These are just three of the materials from which sweaters are made. However, DuPont introduced other materials into the competition. Man-made fibers with new and different properties. One of these new materials was Orlan acrylic fiber. DuPont makes Orlan in large quantities. Other companies spin the fiber into yarn. Still others knit the yarn into sweaters. Sweaters with important new advantages. Sweaters made of Orlan are easy to care for. They dry quickly, need no blocking. They resist stretching. They resist shrinking. And moths don't bother Orlan. You can get sweaters of Orlan in lovely, soft pastels and deep, rich shades. Orlan has been able to compete successfully because it has these superior qualities and because DuPont works continually to make it even better and better and better. DuPont, of course, makes only the fiber. Other companies use Orlan fiber to make sweaters which are favored by customers as well as buyers. In the fibers that go into sweaters, as in everything else it makes, DuPont faces strong competition. And it competes by constantly improving its materials and developing new ones, helping to bring you a wider choice of better products. In this way, DuPont brings you all of its better things for better living through chemistry. my window. Wilson, don't leave me. No, doctor. Uh, get that man Dowd out of here. Yes, doctor. No, Wilson, don't leave me. Yeah, but you just said oh, I should... Dumpy, Dumpy, Dumpy on the telephone. Dumpy, Dumpy. Dumpy. yes. Yes. Hmm? Hello, Dumpy? Hmm. Give that guy Dowd his clothes and get him down here right away. Oh, don't, don't leave me, Wilson. Don't leave me. Just a minute, doctor. Oh, I want to see Dr. Chumley. Hiya, Myrtle. Hello. Chumley, we've got to talk. This thing is serious. It certainly is. More serious than you suspect. Let's go to your office. Oh, not in there. The doctor doesn't want anyone to go in his office. No, sir. Uh, sit down, Dr. Chumley. Uh, sit down, Myrtle May. Sit down, Dr. Chumley. Sit down, Myrtle May. No, Wilson, don't leave me. Now, Chumley, here are my notes. The facts. The facts. Now, Chumley, has it ever occurred to you that possibly there might be something like this rabbit, Harvey? Of course there isn't. And anyone who thinks so is crazy. Well, don't look at me like that. There's nothing funny about me. I'm like my father's family. Now then, my client, Mrs. Simmons, swears that on November the 2nd, while standing in her kitchen, she saw this great white rabbit, Harvey. He was staring at her. Resenting the intrusion, she made certain remarks and drove the creature from the room. What'd she say to him? Uh, well, the remarks are not important. I want to know how she got this creature out of her sanitarium. I mean, uh, I mean her home. Huh? She looked him right in the eye and exclaimed in the heat of anger, to hell with you. To hell with you. He left me. Yes, he left, but that's beside the point. I well, Dr. Chumley, I've been looking for you. Dr. Sanderson, disregard what I said this afternoon. I, 
I want you on my staff. You are a very astute young man. Thank you, Dr. Chumley. Uh, Miss Kelly and I have Mr. Dowd upstairs now. He seems quite calm and quite reasonable. I've done a complete report on him, sir. I'd like to show it to you. We'll him. try to keep him under control. That man can be dangerous. Oh, you just oh. got to keep Uncle Elwood out here, doctor. No, I want this sanitarium the way it was before that man came out here this afternoon. I know what you mean. You do? Well... It would certainly get on anyone's nerves the way Uncle Elwood always knows what's going to happen before it happens. Like this morning, for instance. He told us that Harvey told him that Mrs. McElhenney's Aunt Rose was going to drop in on her unexpectedly tonight from Cleveland. And did she? Did she what? Aunt Rose, did she drop in as Harvey said she would? Oh, yes. These things always turn out the way Uncle Elwood says they will. But what of it? I mean, what do we care about the McElhenney's? You say this sort of thing happens often? Yes, and isn't it silly? Uncle Elwood says that Harvey tells him everything, that Harvey knows everything. Well, how could he when there is no such thing as Harvey? Fly specks. I've been spending my life among fly specks while miracles have been leaning on lampposts on 18th and Fairfax. Oh, good. Nobody here but people. Oh, Mother, you promised you wouldn't come out here. I brought your Uncle Elwood's bathrobe. But, well, why are you sitting like this? I thought you'd be committing him. Sit uh, down, Vito. Over there. Well, I, uh, I won't sit there. Uh, well, is uh, everything set? I'm ready to give my opinion now, Doctor. Do by all means. Judge, that's the doctor I told you about, you know, with the eyes. It is my opinion, Doctor, that the patient Elwood P. Dowd is suffering from a third-degree hallucination, and the other party is the victim of auto-suggestion. I recommend the use of emergency formula 977 for him and bed rest at home for... You do? Yes, Doctor, that's my diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dowd will not see this rabbit anymore after this injection. Oh, dear, now why did Harvey have to speak to him in the first place? With the whole town full of people, why did he have to bother Elwood? I'm not sure that it would work in a case of this kind, Doctor. It always has before, Doctor. Well, now, uh, Harvey always follows him home. He does? Yes. So if you give Elwood the formula and Elwood doesn't see Harvey, then he won't let him in. Then when he does come to the door... I'll deal with him. Oh, Mother, will you stop talking about Harvey as if there were such a thing? Now, Myrtle May, you have a lot to learn, and I hope you'll never learn it. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Dow. Good evening, everybody. Oh, oh, Elwood did. I brought your bathrobe. Did you do that? It was nice of you. Uh -huh. Why don't we all go down to Charlie's for a drink? Uh -uh. Oh, Doctor, where did you and Harvey get off to? We're waiting for your answer, Doctor. Mm -hmm. What's your decision? Is this thing going to work or not? I must... Be alone with this man, will you? All excuse us, please. Dr. Sanderson will use your office. I'll have my diagnosis in a moment. Yes, well, I do hurry, Doctor. Here we are, Mr. Dowd. Let me give you a chair. Thank you. And uh, let me give you a cigar. Huh? <laughs> Is there anything else I can get you? What do you have in mind? Tell me, Mr. Dowd, what kind of a man are you? And where on the face of this tired old earth did you find a thing like him? Harvey? The is, poker? Is it true that he's able to, that he can... Uh... Gets advance notice? Hmm. I'm happy to say it is, Doctor. Uh -huh. Harvey is versatile. Harvey can stop clocks. What? Well, you've heard the expression, his face will stop a clock. Harvey can say, he says he can look at your clock and stop it. Hmm. And you can go away as long as you like with whomever you like, and go as far as you like. When you come back, not one minute will have ticked by. You mean that he's... Science has overcome time and space. Harvey has not only overcome time and space, but any objections. And does he do this for you? Oh, he's willing to at any time. But so far, I've never been able to think of any place I'd rather be. I always have a wonderful time just where I am, whomever I'm with. I'm having a wonderful time with you right now, Doctor. I know where I'd go. Where? I'd go to Akron. Akron? There's a cottage camp outside Akron in a grove of maple trees. Cool, green, beautiful. My favorite tree. I'd go there with a pretty young woman, a strange woman, a quiet woman. Under a tree? I wouldn't even want to know her name. And I, I would be Dr. Brown. 
Well, why wouldn't you want to know her name? You might be acquainted with the same people. I'd send out for cold beer. I would talk to her. I'd tell her things I've never told anyone, things that are locked in here. And then I'd send out for more cold beer. No whiskey? Beer is better. And I wouldn't let her talk to me, but as I talk, I would want her to reach out a soft white hand and stroke my head and say, poor thing. Oh, you poor, poor thing. How long would you like this to go on? Two weeks. I can't help but feel that you're making a mistake not allowing that woman to talk. I'm sure you're making a mistake with all that beer and no whiskey, but it's your two weeks. Cold beer at Akron and one last fling. Tell me, tell me, Mr. Dowd, could he, would he do this for me? He could, and he might. I've never heard Harvey say a word against Akron. Oh, by the way, Doctor, where is Harvey? Why, don't you know? Why, no, the last time I saw him, I believe he went off with you. Oh. Oh, I know. He's probably waiting down at Charlie's place. We're all going down there for a friendly drink. Why don't you join us? No, wait a minute, Mr. Dowd. None of those people out there are your friends. I am your friend. Thank you, Doctor, and I am yours. And the sister of yours, she's at the bottom of a conspiracy against you. She's trying to persuade me to lock you up. Today she had commitment papers drawn up. She's got your power of attorney, the key to your safe deposit box. She brought you out here. All that in one afternoon, Vita, is certainly a whirlwind. Haven't you any righteous indignation? Doctor. My mother used to say, in this world, Elwood, she always called me Elwood. Mm -hmm. She'd say, in this world, Elwood, you must be oh so smart or oh so pleasant. For years, I was smart. I recommend pleasant. You may quote me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Miss Kelly, diviner grace has never brightened this enchanting face. Ovid's fifth elegy. Thank you, Mr. Dowd. You can get Mr. Dowd's papers ready. He's going to be discharged. Oh, yes, Doctor. I wonder if I would be able to remember any more of that poem. Ovid always was my favorite poet. Dowd, do women often come up to you and kiss you like Miss Kelly did just now? Every once in a while. I encourage it, too. To hell with decency. I've got to have that rabbit. Doctor, is everything settled? I find I concur with Dr. Sanderson. Oh, no. Thank you, Doctor. Well, let's celebrate. I have some new bars listed in the back of this little book. This injection carries a violent reaction. I can't give it to him without his consent. Will he give it? Oh, he will if I ask him. Don't ask him. Give it to him. Blondie's Chicken Inn, Bessie's uh, Barn Dance, Benny's Better Late Than Never Drive-In. I think we better make it Benny's drive-in. Don't you think we ought to phone for a table, Vita? How mm -hmm. many of us will there be? Well, there's a... Mr. Dowd, I have a formula, 977, that will be good for you. Will you take it? And well, you won't see this rabbit anymore. But you will see your duties, your responsibilities. Doctor, I'm sure if you thought of it, it must be a very wonderful thing. And if I run into anybody that needs it, I shall highly recommend it. For myself, I wouldn't care. Well, you hear that, Judge? You hear that, Doctor? Now, that's what we have to put up with. Vita? Do you want me to take this? Well, now, Elwood, I'm only doing this for you. You are my brother, and I've known you for years. Oh, I'd do anything for you. But that Harvey wouldn't do anything for you. He's making a fool out of you, Elwood. Oh, Elwood, now don't be a fool. No, I won't. Oh, but you could amount to something. You could be sitting on the Western Slope waterboard right now, if you'd only go over and ask them. Very well, Vita. If that's what you want, Harvey and I will go over and ask them tomorrow. Tomorrow? I never want to see another tomorrow. Not if Myrtle May and I have to live with that rabbit. We're both miserable. I wish I were dead. <laughs> I don't suppose you care. <laughs> Doctor, I've always wanted Vita to have everything she wants. Vita, are you sure?
Very well, Doctor. I'll take it. Where do I go? Back into Dr. Sanderson's office, Dowd. Oh, Doctor. Say goodbye to the old fellow for me, won't you? How long will this take, Doctor? Only a few moments. Why don't you wait? That will wait. Sanderson said it won't take long. <laughs> now, Mother, don't fidget. <laughs> well, I can't help it, dear. <laughs> I'm looking for a short little, uh... Oh, uh, there, there you are. Hey, lady, uh, you jumped out of the cab without paying me. Oh. Well, I'm so sorry. Well, now, now, how much is it? <laughs> uh, all the way out here from town? Yes. Uh, 275. Oh, 275. <laughs> well, I... Uh, well, that's funny. I, I was sure I had my coin purse. I, um, uh, Myrtle, have you any money? I spent the money Uncle Elwood gave me for my new hairdo for the party. Oh, the, uh, Judge, uh, do you happen to have the uh, 275? Uh, sorry, the... nothing but a check. Uh, oh. we don't take checks. I know. Oh, uh, Dr. Chumley, uh, could I borrow 275 to pay this driver? Please? It's in my wallet. Oh, now, oh, I can't get it now. I have to get on with the injection. Sorry. Oh, oh, dear. Uh, well, I'll get it for you from my brother, but uh, I can't tell now. He's in there getting an injection. You'll just have to wait. Uh, you're going to get my money from your brother who's in there to get some of that stuff they shoot in Andy out, out here? <laughs> yes. He'll only be a few minutes. Uh, lady, I, I want my money now. Oh, no, I say he'll only be a few minutes, and I want you to drive us back to town anyway. Um, like I said, I want my money now, or I'm nosing the cab back to town. You can wait for the bus. It's six in the morning. Well, of all the stupid, pig-headed... I should say so. What's the matter with you? Nothing 275 won't fix. You, 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 you heard me take it or leave it. Well, I've, I've, I've never heard of anything so unreasonable in all my life. Uh... Uh, Dr. Chumley, uh, Dr. Chumley, could, could Elwood step out here just a minute, please? Uh, this taxi driver won't wait. Don't be too long. Oh, Elwood, I forgot my coin purse. <laughs> now, have you 275 to give this man? N not anymore, dear. He's very rude. How do you do? Dowd is my name. Elwood P. Uh, Lofgren's mine. He... E.J. E well, I'm happy to know you, Mr. Lofgren. Oh, this is my sister, Miss Simmons, and Dr. Chumley. My charming little niece, Myrtle May, Judge Gaffney. Hi. Have you lived around here very long, Mr. Lofgren? Yeah, I've uh, li lived around here all my life. You enjoy your work? It's okay. I've uh, been working for Apex Cabs 15 years. My uh, brother Joe's been driving for Brown's Cabs pretty near 12. Well, you drive for Apex, and your brother Joe drives for Browns. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, Vita? <laughs> Mr. Lofgren, let me give you one of my cards. Uh, better get on with this, Mr. Dowd. Oh, certainly. One minute. Uh, my charming little niece and my sister live with me here at this address. We'd like very much to have you and your brother over some evening for dinner. Oh. Sure. Be glad to. When? When would you be glad to? Uh... Couldn't do it any night but Tuesday. I'm on do duty all the rest of the week. Well, you must come on Tuesday, then. We'll expect you and be delighted to see you, won't we, Vita? Well, now, Elwood, I'm sure this man has friends of his own. <laughs> Vita, one can't have too many friends. Oh, no, but don't keep Dr. Chumley waiting. It's oh, rude, dear. I'm I've... sorry. Here you are, Mr. Lofkin, and uh, keep the change. Very nice meeting you, and I'll expect you Tuesday with your brother. Will you excuse me now? Sure. The uh, sweet guy. Yes, well, certainly. And you could just as well have waited. Oh, no. Listen, lady. I've been driving this route 15 years. Driven them out here to get that stuff. Taking them back after they had it. It changes them. Well, I certainly hope so. Yeah, and you ain't kidding. On, on the way out here. Oh, they sit back and enjoy the ride. They, they talk to me. Sometimes we stop and watch the sunsets. Look at the birds flying. Sometimes, some, sometimes we stop and watch the birds when there uh, ain't, ain't no birds. And we look at the sunsets when it's raining. 
and well, we always have a good time. And I, I, I always get a big tip. But afterwards, uh oh. Oh, oh, what do you, how do you mean, oh, oh, oh. Oh, they crab, crab, crab. They, they yell at you to watch the lights, watch the intersections, watch your brakes. They, they scream at you to hurry. They, they ain't got no faith in, in me or, or my buggy. And yet it, it's, it, it's the same cab, it's the same driver, and uh, we're, we're going back over the same route. It's no fun, and... Uh, and no tips? Oh, but my brother would have tipped you anyway. He's very generous. Uh, always has been. Not after this, he won't be. Lady, after this, he's going to be a perfectly normal human being. And you know what slobs they are. Well, glad to have met you. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wait. Michael May, Judge Gaffney, uh, uh. Wait, stop it, stop it! Uh, don't, don't take it out. Come you out of there! Come out of there! You can't do that. Dr. Chumley's giving the injection. No, 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 mother. No, I don't want Albert to have it. I don't want him like that. I don't like people like that. Uh, do something with it, Judge Mother. Stop it! Now, now, you shut up. I've lived longer than you have. I remember my father. I remember your father, too. I, 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 oh. What's this? What's all this commotion? The trouble, Doctor. She's sounding off again. She wants to stop the injection. Yes, you haven't given it to him, have you, Doctor? No, but we're ready. Take Mrs. Simmons yes. away, Wilson. No, don't, don't you dare touch me, you white s slaver. I, I, you don't I, know what you want. Oh, you didn't want that rabbit, either. And what's wrong with Harvey? If Myrtle May and Elwood and I want to live with Harvey, well, of course, that's nothing to do with you. You needn't even come around. That's our business. <laughs> oh, Elwood. There, there, Elwood. there, there. Oh, 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 oh. Rita's all tired out. She's done a lot today. Oh. Uh, have it your own way. I'm not giving up my game at the club again, no matter how big the animal is. Oh, Elwood, Elwood. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I hate this place. Oh, I wish I'd never even seen it. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, well, that's funny. <sighs> it's my coin purse. Well, I could have paid that driver all the time. I... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come along, Myrtle May. Come along, Elwood. Oh, Elwood, hurry. Oh, hurry, please. Oh, please, hurry. Well, good night, Dr. Chumley. Mr. Wilson, we'd be honored if you'd call on us in the near future. Why, sure, be glad to. When? How about tomorrow? Better be fine. Coming, Lita. Oh, there you are. I beg your pardon, Doctor. You're standing in his way. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Associates production. Be with us Tuesday, October 28th at 7.30 Eastern Time when Alexander Dumas' best-known and best-loved novel, The Count of Monte Cristo, comes to life on the DuPont Show of the Month. The DuPont Company brings you this reminder from the United Funds and Councils of America.